Here we are, game number four. Will we see this go to game five? This is the last decider in Titans League Silver. Winner moves on to gold, which starts this week. Uh, Gabby playing as the Japanese in the red. I think she, most likely she's just going to go man at our marcher, right? Like, I normally associate Serengeti with scouts, but I think if you're up against Chinese, the Chinese can really struggle against early man at arm pressure. And who CL is going to need to defend in that from that few late aggression, which can be difficult to do on this map, right? Um, you know, I've seen Chinese multiple times on this map. And I think I've only seen them win once. Because when they're up against Mongols, Mongols get a lot of aggression. When they're up against, uh, you know, like Aztecs or something, Aztecs can go for a lot of aggression. So basically, the longer this game goes, the worse it is for the Japanese guys. But the cheaper lumber camps, mills, mining camps, and then the faster attacking man-at-arms, all those things are important here. Also, what else is important is you do not want to get lamed if you're Chinese. So I think Gabby's trying to lame. She's trying to find that elephant. There's only one of them on this map. She came forward really early. Who CL obviously saw her because they attacked each other. And I think Who CL is actually looking for that scout now to get another boop. And they're both going to get the bonks. And Gabby's going to try and run over to the hill. But yeah, if I'm Who CL, I take my uh, elephant here. Or at least, actually, no, no, no. You want to make sure everything's properly timed. If you have your scout here, there's no way Gabby should ever take that. Or will she? Oh, boy. Now, she won't get there in time. Elephant's going to come in. Very well played from both players so far. Let's see what Gabby's actually found at home. You could tell that that was a bit of a risk there from her, right? And so, in her mind, she also realizes how good the Chinese can be. I think at this point, she definitely has to go home to find her resources, push in some deer. We might see her uptime struggle. I've seen some crazy build orders with the Japanese if they push in all their deer and bring in all their sheep. Uh, so I think 19 pop, 18 pop is actually achievable with some really tight build orders. And that type of timing with man at arms would really devastate the Chinese. But those timings are eliminated from the equation now that you haven't, it's not so much having the sheep, but it's also having the, the ostrich and the zebra. So this will likely be more around the lines of like 21 population, which is your standard times you'll see in most maps. Still strong, obviously, and still will be awkward for Husiel, but... And she just didn't find the reward she wanted there. Wanted to get away with some with stealing some resources. So I wonder if we see Husiel try and open with archers. Uh, because it feels like Man at Arms is expected. And I mean, it's definitely gonna be on your mind that the infantry for Japanese is really tough to deal with. Mm, normally you want a bit of a wall, so wall here. While here, while here, I mean, I, I would be okay with giving up the front. The Chinese is a civilization that you definitely want to get full walls down instead of small walls, I'd say. Nice little house. That house could actually be a spot of worry later on. Um, Gabby could melt that thing. I've seen it many times with the Japanese. But obviously she'll want to melt villagers more than anything. She looks like she's now going to go out and make a barracks, and Gabby has not found her own resources. She has not found the sheep here. She has not found the sheep here. And she is almost out of food underneath the TC. Now she is pushing it. In. Oh, it trolled her. Oh, God. She's trying to push it in underneath the TC, but it was going to go back. Oh, God. She's lamed herself by not getting her own resources. Well, she's Japanese, so I think it could have been worthwhile to maybe even make a mill, but she didn't... Oh, man. Just two sheep, and everything's fine. I think she really needs to get Loom, like cancel this vill, get Loom, and just go up, and hope she has the food. I, I, I don't know if she'll actually have it. Like, drop a mill here so this gets dropped off, and then drop off the food here, and then go up. <laughs> she's... Yeah. Oh, man. This is this is really, really poor for her. And uh, some people are going to be like, Aha! This is what lamers get! And then other people are like, Well, that's sad. But uh, she spent a lot of time forward, right? That's the risk you take. I, at the end of the day, though, her, she's still going to have good economy. It's just not the timing that she would have wanted, you know? 
Now, who CL has 20 villagers, will be in Feudal Age in 40 seconds. And so far, it looks like who CL is going for scouts. It would make sense there'll be scouts, and Husiel will be so happy to see that barracks. He'll be like, what? Because normally you're expecting to see the barracks with the flag on it already. And you're expecting to have to quick wall and, and protect your villagers on these very exposed wood lines. I keep hearing Lucille when T90 says Husiel. Hmm. Well, he used to be known as DJ Who. And then at some point he changed his name. Um... So I've heard someone say Wackle. <laughs> but uh, it's just it's just who. Not Lucille, though. I mean, I don't know his first name. Maybe it is Lucille. Uh, I've not been given that information, though. Uh, there's a little... Ooh, okay. A little fancy gate. Felt a little unnecessary there. But, ooh. Also getting housed hurts really bad. That's a bad one there. I guess the stable's producing at least, but the TC's not. And all right, it's been a sloppy game, guys, but they're going to have to figure this out, both of them. And the resources are sick for Gabby, like really good. As she just drops the archer range. So she didn't have the timing, but she still got a nice little position. Did lose her scout, however. Her scout did show her what her opponent was doing. And the scouts right now are trying to engage before these become man-at-arms. I don't think that's possible. But normally you're going to want a Spearman and an Archer next if you're Gabby. And then Husiel's immediately switching into a couple Skirms to help with that. Keep in mind, no Horse Collar for the Scout player. That's normally something you want off these builds. And that's some epic reaction time from him. And needs the same here as well. And won't get it. Will get it. Well, won't get it. Will get it. Won't get it. Oh, it's going to fight it off. This is a really good fight, actually. Tough against the Japanese, but absolutely a fight that you'll be okay with taking. As long as... I ah, actually don't love it. <laughs> actually could have been a little bit better there. So again, the thing about the Chinese is they get more food on their farms after horse car than other civilizations do. So you really want to get that upgrade. And also, techs are cheaper, so it should be more achievable. So the fact that it hasn't actually come in yet is not the greatest. And here comes Spearman Archer now. At double Spearman, double Archer actually from Gabby. And it's not actually Skirmishers from Husio. It's going for Archers as well. Now we see double range from Gabby and the Blacksmith timing. Gabby's build is looking pretty clean from here on out, guys. Uh, as I say that, she gets housed. So the pressure's on for both of them. And mistakes are being made with the pop space. I think that could happen to Husiel as well, because his house will be delayed here, if not completely denied, as the two archers, two spearmen, will find some nice value. Meanwhile, though, we have the scouts finding value against Gabby, so she'll lose a villager. And she could lose more if she's not careful, as those scouts run through those trees. Awkward situation for Husiel, who needs to defend. A Gabby just skirts right by the TC. And she's going to get away with that. And now she heads to the gold. Still no fletching here for our blue player. But has killed two villagers. But it's been a messy one. And I think fletching is, is possible here soon. Just a lot of villagers pulled over towards straggler trees. A lot of villagers not collecting resources right now for Husiel. And Gabby is going to take a free archer pick as well. Definitely go for the archers first. You don't even get the villagers at this point. Because if you get the archers, then you're going to continue to deny these wood lines. And pressure's on. Who's CL? He is Chinese. He is getting fletching. But he's been housed a couple times. He doesn't have the army numbers of Gabby. Gabby's got a lot more structure. Both ranges are producing. Reinforcements coming in. This archer will likely go down. These archers here getting some nice little picks. It's just on the spearman, though. And this is well played from Who's CL, who's definitely stabilizing. Has more villagers. Has killed more villagers. Just needs to hold a little bit here. And very good patience with the scouts. Well, as I say it, maybe not. And we see villagers going to stone for Husiel. As Husiel now drops a tower on what is currently Husiel's only woodline. These units here. There's something that Husiel will want to deal with at some point. It feels like now that he's got the tower here, he might be comfortable enough to go chase that down. But look at Gabby. Gabby immediately says, that tower doesn't protect the backside of your woodline. 
I love this approach. Th that's so cool, man. Like, you don't see that as much these days. Back in the day, and Gabby's been around a long time, but that was the thing. is like, if someone makes a preemptive tower, it immediately leads to a counter tower, which just denies the whole wo wood line anyways. It's the issue for Gabby is, will she lose this army? And that's so good. She knows that the army will not come here. And if it does, obviously, that she's okay. So she leaves with this. That's really smart. But can she track this? She's not going to be able to tower at home now, obviously, right? I think for Husiel, Husiel could always go back to this wood line, provided this gets cleared up by the skirms. The skirms are searching. They've decided to go forward. Um, who knows what's been noticed here? Oh, man, this is a really crazy game. Oh, but, but Gabby did notice this. The thing is, though, she will lose this fight. But she knows it. She's going to lose her archers, most likely. The scout can take out the skirm. Her fighting with the villagers was the perfect play, though. Because that's going to give her a little bit more time. Now, that said, the micro for Husiel seems superior here. Very good engagement. But now you've got the tower, and now you've got Gabby here. Husiel reacts. Husiel also defending the gold right now. This is insane. They've got, like, three different armies. And the macro has slipped a little bit for both players. But ultimately, it's been really strong. Gabby, though, struggling a little bit at home still. She will lose her force here. This force needs to get value now. It needs to dive. It needs to be aggressive. Because this is not clean for her. Oh, man. That's some sick dodging, though, with the archers. And now she's in on the wood line. Oh, man. That wood line's disgusting. It's at the bottom of a hill. The villagers also don't leave. Like, they're not bumping away when they get hit because they're stuck. Holy crap. We got 10 skirms on the field for Husiel, though. That's a lot of skirmishers. Now, Tower obviously getting some helpful hits as Gabby's distracted here. Husiel diving against more archers. Gabby's still fighting off with villagers, which is a it's a slippery slope, that game. Uh, but there's no archers in the group anymore for Husiel, which is good for Gabby, which means the villagers can kind of stick around here a little bit longer. Now we have Husiel considering taking out the tower, which Gabby was taking the stone next to. And Husiel's just like, man, I'm sick of this. I'm going back to this wood line now. This is crazy messy right now. And still anyone's game. I'd say the thing for Gabby that would be really strong is a scout switch here. <clears throat> Everything she's seeing from her opponent is skirmishers. So, and your opponent also can't take wood lines already. So, you know he's going to exposed areas. With these resources, you either save it for castle age and go knights. Or you try and go skirmishers. Or not skirmishers, try, sorry, scouts. Really crazy game. I really like how she defended here and how persistent she's been with controlling this area. She's trying to send archers over to the other wood line now, but is there a recognition from her that there's just far too many skirms to be continuing archers? It doesn't seem like it. And then will there be a recognition from Husiel that Gabby's sneaking in on that side? We've got the defense here. This should be fine. But will this be noticed? There's the stable, by the way, from Gabby. I like it. I like it a lot. Could have happened a bit earlier. Oh, dude, she's so sneaky with her army, though. And Husiel reacts right away. Uh, Husiel's trying to get Castle Age right now. Might be thinking Gabby's on the way to Castle Age, but Gabby's not. Gabby, maybe even go too stable here. She's going to go full feudal to try and win this and go into Gold League. Will it work? There's a lot of weak villagers in these groups. The gold groups as well. Wasn't actually as weak as I thought on the wood line as we see another tower from Gabby. Telling you, the scouts right here could kill so many villagers. It's still going to take Husiel such a long time to get up. But I, Gabby needs to not show the first scout. So when she shows up, she needs to have at least three or four. I don't think that Husiel has seen this. Husiel does buy some stone for a counter tower. Wants to rush this one down because... The towers aren't close enough to each other where this one provides cover fire. And there's a lot of red on the map. It's all heading towards the wood line. He actually didn't buy the stone. He's been mining the stone, and I think if Husiel knew the scouts were coming, would probably want to drop a tower here. Is this a good move from Gabby? As Husiel quick walls around, saw the scouts last minute. That's epic. That's epic. These villagers could die as well for Gabby now that they're trapped in here. That was so freaking strong. But Gabby, you've got to hit this right now. And, and Blue, you've got to drop a tower. Drop a tower, you're probably okay. If you don't drop a tower, everything could fall apart. 
Still some stubbornness from Gabby there as she repairs. And there's the tower. Oh, God. Oh, man. Look at how many archers are here. But imagine if the scouts had gone here first. If the scouts had gone here first, there would be so much more damage. Because you really got to kill fast if you're not going to go Castle Age. I think with that tower being up, UCL's kind of okay. Could maybe make a knight or two. And then the scouts aren't really a problem. And now Gabby has decisions to make. And I think that decision all revolves around just micro. Micro, micro, micro with those scouts. Try and keep the range units alive. Bod Canero comes in for Husiel now. And he's just going to go skirms. Uh, no knights whatsoever. So much idle time. And can barely take wood. These villagers really need to get to that wood line. I'm not sure what's happening. No bloodlines for these scouts. But at the end of the day... There's still scouts against skirmishers, right? I was a little surprised we didn't see uh, some buying and selling at the market from Husiel to add a knight from that stable. Could send a knight here. Could send a knight into Gabby's economy. Gabby's economy is looking great, by the way. Look at that. That town center. I don't. I don't like this town center at all. From 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 him. And uh, this town center doesn't do anything for you. This town center just donates kills. It still feudal aid skirmishers. Sure, you've got Bod Canero, but those scouts can still engage. Gabby knows it. She's still producing scouts, guys. She's still producing archers. She's got bloodlines now coming in. That TC is now denied, but he spent the resources for it. And I think Gabby's going to take this series. It's looking so good for her right now, but she's still stuck in feudal. She's not that many. She's not that far ahead in villagers. That's where it gets so complicated. But the efficiency of the economy is just unbelievable for her. I think you can still produce more archers. Maybe you just stop producing scouts now and then you save your food. You know this is bad when you have to make a tower in order to be able to complete a town center. And now more villagers die. The the, the knights maybe could have come out here for Husiel, but I think ultimately when he made it to Castle Age, he didn't really have the resources to do much. And Gabby had so many archers that... He just knew that it wouldn't have really accomplished much, at least in defense. And now the Vills start to get sniped. Now the Eco KD is 14 to 4. And Gabby's even going to dive underneath this tower. This could be the game. This should be the game, actually. Husiel has nothing. He's going to have two towers. And maybe two TCs. But 18 villagers have been lost. And it's going to be 19. It should end up being 20 here. Gabby actually is going to make a tower over here as well. And Gabby's played so good, guys. So clean. She uh, has improved a lot in the ladder this year. And the thing about her that I mentioned before is she's just got that, like, killer instinct in her gameplay. And I gotta love the classic style of going full feudal here. A lot of players don't do that. A lot of players hate to stay in feudal age forever. But the production's been wild, man. And the TC will probably go up. But, again, what do you achieve when you have 20 villagers and 2 TCs? And, oh, it won't even go up. Yeah, this is over. Great game from Gabby. With this win, she will move on into Gold League. It'll be interesting to see how she performs there as well, obviously, right? There will be a lot of players who are... Uh, I mean, you're just going to be facing much higher competition when you're in Gold League, right? So there's going to be a lot of players who get promoted from Silver who may be uh, favored to be relegated right back down to uh, to silver after their, their time in gold. Tower is a little questionable, Gabby. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that tower right now, but um, I mean, maybe I'm calling it too soon. No, I'm not calling it too soon. This game's over. Disappointed for Husiel, obviously. Or, like, this game's fine. But deleting your TC in the first game, you just donated a win to a very good player. And I think that's what Husiel is going to look back to more than anything. This is just a great battle from both players. But losing that first game the way he did set himself up for failure here. Obviously, we don't know how that game would have gone. Mongols versus Gurjaras. But he started this series down one game, basically, after how that flowed out. Also, gotta love how Gabby didn't even use the market this entire time. Isn't that something else? In, in present-day meta, people are using the markets all the time. <laughs> she didn't market at all. I love it. Couple towers. 
Uh, just just playing open. Do we see a single Palisade wall from her? Nope. This is, this is like the type of play that I aspire to have. Really respectable how she's gone about this on this map. Against the Chinese, obviously, which I think are just better civilization the longer the game goes. But Gabby's resources are... She's going to genuinely be able to do everything when she gets to the next stage. Uh, she'll be able to go for Knights. She'll be able to go for a castle drop, siege, whatever. Um, Husiel is probably sitting here just like knowing he's dead, but if he resigns, he has to accept that he's lost. He doesn't know what Gabby's bill count is, but he's got to know that he's lost a lot of villagers here. And I don't know. I'm not really seeing a win condition for the guy. He might try and get a TC up on gold, but Gabby's not letting that happen. But I think... We're just going to have to wait until Gabby hits Gaslage, and then finally we're going to see who CL call it. Like, he's trying to get another TC up. Because he's been on two TCs for a bit. But, uh... Clearly, Gabby knows everything. That's the other thing about Gabby, is, is she does a great job at, like, resource recognition. Keeping an eye on everything. Even using a scout here to look for other resources. Like she's, she's playing like a beast. Yeah, hope Gabby's internet crashes. Well, if Gabby's internet were to crash, they would restore it, right? <laughs> also, if, like, Gabby's internet were to crash right now, uh, obviously, I'm not doing the admin work, but JBR would probably be like, this game is over. So, <laughs> you don't you don't get a victory out of this, Husiel. Like, have armor. GG probably called right after the resign. What a great performance from Gabby. And so, like I said, there's been a lot of people rooting for her. There's been a lot of people impressed with her progression. And so she joins the Gold League, and we'll actually talk about that soon. Now, for those of you watching later on YouTube, it's going to be a separate video most likely, but we'll actually get to look at the Gold groups and the Platinum groups for the first season. Um, but yeah, that settles it. Uh, she's one of the nine players who promoted out of Silver. Had to play a lot of games, had to do it around, uh, you know, the Christmas season and everything too. So the players had to stay focused and whatnot. But again, zero Palisade walls. Playing open, playing aggressive, scouts, spearmen, man at arms, skirms, archers, light cab would be knights. I mean, we do we just genuinely saw everything from her in this game. It's just the perfect game to win a series with, I feel. <laughs> it's just, oh man, it, it must feel so good to be able to dominate like this. GG.